Okay, here we go. So, Richard, Richard Franklin, uh, first and foremost, have you had a good weekend? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's been wonderful seeing friends that I, I've made over the last 50 years. It's quite extraordinary. Yeah, yeah I, I can imagine. I mean, Devil's End is so good because it looks precisely the way that it did in The Demons. It looks like a place out of time. Yep, absolutely. Um, it's extraordinary. It's really wonderful. Um, so, uh, I mean, I've, I've got to ask about like the future of Doctor Who. I mean, I know... Um, I know John said earlier, you know, how unlikely it would be to have kind of a return of the golden age of unit. But I mean, yeah. if, if, if they gave you the offer, if, if the offer was, you know, we'll get Brigadier Benton, we'll get Sergeant Yates, you know? Yes. I don't think I'd be Sergeant Yates. No? I, I, no. I, I should be, I, I think, what, Brigadier Benton and Sergeant, and Sergeant Yates. Oh, you think, you think you're, you're going ahead, John? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I always have been. Yeah, I'll say that. I'll yeah. say that. Uh, yeah. So I've got to ask, what was uh, the? No, I, I think that um, I, I think that um, um, uh, Yates probably would be Black Rod or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can take it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think I think I think I know your answer to this, but if you had to pick a favourite episode that you starred in. Yeah, um, which one would it be? I imagine it's probably going to be the demons because of the motorcycle chase. Um, <coughs> I, I think probably, yes, I think probably the demons. Uh, that was certainly the one that I enjoyed filming most. Mm. Um, I think... Um, yeah, yes. Um, sorry, ask me another question. Yeah, you're quite all right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the unit era Doctor yeah. Who. Like, that's my favourite. I love the unit family. Yes. And you really see that, I think, at its best in the Demons, where everyone gets a good piece. You know, you've got, the brigadier yeah. with, uh, you've got the Brigadier Actually, doing the heat wall. And yeah, there's one at the beginning of The Mind of Evil, I think, is rather good. Um, but um, it goes on too long. It's two episodes too long. I yeah, I've, uh, I completely agree. I think The Demons works very good at being five episodes. I think maybe you could shave one episode off. Yes. It's a bit of a rubber band story yes. where you can kind of stretch it out and it, it still works. It doesn't yeah. feel like there's a lot of filler in that. Yeah. Uh, and so I think a bit more generically now, if uh, Mike Yates could star in a episode, what would kind of be your ideal return for him? What would you love to see him do at some point? Um, well, I think... With all of the characters, I think it is suggested that I have other interests, um, and um, it would be nice to um, uh, develop those interests. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Last one now. This is a bit more generic now. I think just yeah. anyone that's watching, if you have any words that you'd like to say to young Doctor Who, fa well, young and old Doctor Who fans for generations well, to come. Uh, I mean, the loyalty factor is quite extraordinary. And um, keep watching. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, people really have been unbelievably loyal to stick with us for 50 years. I think it's incredible. Um, and it must be in, um, uh, unusual uh, in, in the television world. But, um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, really. yeah, brilliant. That's yeah. been, that's been uh, fantastic. Thank yeah. you. I'm afraid uh, you caught me at the end of the day. Oh, we're and, all tired. Uh, I, think I, we're think all, I think we're all nipping to the cloven hoof for a pint in a minute, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yes, okay, that's been uh, that's yeah. wonderful then. Thank you very Good. much. And, uh, well, thank you very much for taking the trouble. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Yes, lovely. This is your first time coming down to one of the, uh, well, to this Devil's End event, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Because you're yeah. very recently been cast in the Big Finish stuff. Oh, it was, well, it was, uh, I say recently, it was about um, eight years ago. Mm. Um, I started Hell, playing has with it. Been? Yeah, it's that long, yeah. And I've been associated with Big Finish for about 12 years, mm. I think. Yeah. Nice. Um, but, yeah, go on. But being the three, third doctor since. I think it's 2014. Mm. So yeah, so quite a few years. God, that has been. Yeah, yeah. I, I was under the impression I was a fairly recent one. Um, so yeah, the obvious question is like settling into the character of John Pertwee. How does that feel? Oh well, I mean it's uh, it's a great honour. 
to to try and to emulate his work. Um, as as I, I'm telling someone earlier, I, I can't do an impression of him as such. It's trying to find the essence and spirit of mm. him in the performance. So um, yeah, because when I first, because I've um, I got into them around the start, I got into some of the Third Doctor stuff through lockdown, and initially when I was hearing the voice for it. It was a bit disorientating, but very quickly it was. You, you captured the spirit and the energy of him extremely well. Oh, thank you. I thought extremely well. Thank you very much. Because uh, uh, I was listening to um, to the the Cyberman story. Yes. Oh yeah, Cyberman. Uh, yes, yes. That's it. <laughs> well, no, the one with three becoming infected with the yeah. Cyberman. That that was fantastic. Um, and initially, for the first few minutes, it was kind of okay. I'm listening to a listening to Joe and someone that kind of sounds like Third Doctor. Ten minutes in, ten minutes in, I'm listening to Great. the Doctor and Joe. Great, that's, that's what Joe. we were trying to achieve. Mm. Obviously, you got to have Pertwee meet the Cybermen for the first time in audio. That's right. Um, are there other, any other occasions like that in audio that have been particularly unique that stuck out to you? Um, well, they're all unique because they're all different stories with with new baddies. Um, uh, I mean, and also then we, you know. We've since, well, we more recently had recasts with John Corshook being mm. the brigadier, and we've had the, um, obviously, the Sadie and, and Daisy playing their respective mums. Um, um, I know it's obviously a, always a pleasure working with Katie. She's such a joy to be with. Um, I love her dearly. She's, uh, she's wonderful, and she's been, her and Nick Briggs have, have have just been so inspirational for me and, and so supportive uh, in the work and because um, obviously you know fans are real dedicated fans and so it's it's such a pleasure and an honor to to be doing this and having their support in the main it's it's really really great it's it's so humbling and, and touching that's why I love being at these things I have to ask do you have a favorite story that you've worked on and not necessarily just as the third doctor well the first one was always um, was always special it was destination nerva which was a tom baker one and that's actually how i got the third doctor uh, gig because i was playing a character called lord jack who was a, a victorian zombie um, sort of empire builder in space and I put on this quite sort of posh foppish voice and Tom Baker said oh it sounds like John I can't do a Tom Baker impression get John called to it but um, uh, he was the one who said it and the casting came from there so that one obviously is, is very special um, more recently the, the Devil's Footprints uh, I think it's the Devil's or the Devil's Hoof Footprints one of the two it's just been released I think that was a particular pleasure because I do I remember being fixated by the legend of the the devil tooth prince um, which actually occurred apparently in a Victorian England somewhere um, so yeah that was a special one to do and being here is just fantastic because mm. the demons I think is my my favorite I think it ranks quite high yeah in it's most my favorite I, I think it's absolutely brilliant um, and so being here is really special because I love history so seeing Having watched the, the the story and now being here and mm. seeing it 50 years later and seeing that it's almost exactly the same is just. To uh, me, I do I have love to that. ask about the Pertwee voice though. Do you, how how quickly can you jump in and out of it? Are you, are you I, no, I, to well, I have a to. Lot? Well, usually I'm not like I was just saying this to John earlier, full sure that he, you know, obviously can access straight voices straight away. As an actor, I I I have to have a script mm. and about five ten minutes. To, to wire myself in, so okay. you know I could you know I could do like a sonic screwdriver. No, that's even that. I, I need to zone into it first to get this because you know get the tombo which is quite mm. low and getting that. I was sibling, going to ask, uh, do, would you? This is entirely just me being a fanboy now. Uh, could I grab a few lines as uh, for, for the third Doctor? Well, right. Have you got a script? <laughs> could I get? Um, Hello, my name is the Doctor, and you are watching Hadley. Hello. Um, hang on. Are you recording? Can I, can I edit? Yeah, if yeah, I go ahead. Hello, my name. Hello. Hello. My name's the Doctor. You're watching Hadley. So, okay. Hello. My name's the Doctor. You're watching Hadley. Reverse the polarity. That is fantastic. Can I get one more? And can I just get Skongo is the best villain? Skongo. No. Skongo is the best villain. Best villain. 
Skongo is the best villain. Skongo is the best villain. Give me get it lower. Skongo. Skongo. Skongo is the best villain. Is that? that right? That's good. That's wonderful. Skongo is the best, best villain. Yeah. See, normally I have to. No, I, I, I got to get you it. Really, I have to listen really to his can stuff. Nail it. That's and a perfectionist um, that work right there. <laughs> that is fantastic. Right. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Cheers. Right. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Oh, we'll do, I better do oh, that. Oh yeah. Bull, bloody hell. And we are here with Johnny Who. First and foremost, would you like to tell the people about who you are and what you do? Yep. The camera? Yep. So my name's Johnny Baines, aka Johnny Who Entertainment. We are a fan-based team mm -hmm. who like to make lots of great fan-based films together. Great stuff. Um, do you have a Facebook page? Can you? Can you? Would yes, you like to promote it? Yes. We're on Facebook and on YouTube on Johnny Who Entertainment. Fantastic. And I guess you'd say you're a bit of a con go. This isn't quite a convention, but this is an event. How yeah. have you found the event today? Today, well, it's always lovely to be at the uh, old village of uh, Old Bourne where they did uh, the Damons mm -hmm. and uh, to see the stars here and that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I think it could have gone better, but obviously the weather has not been on our side. Not at all. But from the inside looking in, uh, when we've actually been inside, it's been wonderful. We've been able oh, to mingle yeah. with the stars yes. and stuff. Yeah, it has been a lovely day uh, getting to talk to everyone. It's right. been nice. Absolutely. And on a, on a general level, I guess, Doctor Who fandom. What got you into Doctor Who, may I ask? Can we go <laughs> that truth? far back? Can we go that far back? <laughs> yes. When I was uh, around about three, four years old, mm -hmm. my brothers were into Doctor Who, right. and uh, they had Revenge of the Cybermen on uh, VHS mm -hmm. and Deadly Assassin. Okay. And uh, on uh, UK Gold at the time, uh, there was... Gold. Planet of the Daleks. Yes. And I saw them exterminating people and I thought, wow, this is a bit of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. My earliest memory of Classic Who was uh, Resurrection of the Daleks, which I got on VHS. But yeah. Great um, story. Yeah, absolutely. You look at that and you equate it to now. How has your fandom grown? How, how did it get to you going to conventions? And this sort of thing? Right, so obviously it all started off with the VHS videos, of course. Uh, what was purchased at Woolworths at the mm -hmm. time, which is sadly no longer with us. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, it was then uh, at the Moving Images. My parents went there and yeah. they bought me back a Dalpol white uh, Imperial Dalek figure. And that blew my mind because I'd never thought that they did Doctor Who figures yeah. uh, when I was a child. And so then they took me to Moving Images where they had a little display with a Dalek a uh, canine and a mm. Cyberman there and that. I was like, wow, this is absolutely amazing. Mm. And then uh, a couple of years later down the line, uh, my granddad lived in Wales near Langoflin, mm. where the Dalpo exhibition was. Of course. And they basically just turned around to me and said, oh, there's an army museum down the road we're going to take you to. So they travelled through these valleys and stuff like that. And I was looking forward to seeing this army place. And then all of a sudden we pulled up to the big Doctor Who Langoflin uh, exhibition. Mm. I went... By any chance, can we go in there? Instead, they went, we're actually taking you to this instead. Oh. Uh, it was a, all a cunning ploy to uh, surprise me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Wow. And so we made good friends with everyone in Lath uh, Langoflin and uh, mm. we were allowed to do lots of behind the scenes things in like the original Daleks oh. and things like that and uh, also interact with them and make films with them as well. Mm, I was about to come on to that. So what got you into... And, and how has that progressed for you, getting into making Doctor Who fan films, you know? Well, with Sophie, Sophie yeah. Aldred, uh, we also bumped into uh, each other at Langoflin mm. uh, for my birthday surprise, right. which then I had a couple of my mates dressed up as unit, uh, just for a laugh, mm. and uh, we used to reenact Doctor Who stuff for my birthday when I was little. And ever since then, we... Uh, become really close friends and I got to know Sylvester and everyone else and so it started to get more serious for me I, mm. I got a better camera and equipment and then I was getting the crew along yeah. and uh, just making costumes and stuff and uh, all of a sudden through the years it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger mm. wow that's say, incredible we have you say some stuff into the camera basically explain to the camera what Johnny did in the Okay. Uh, Absolutely, I'll leave the mic here. So yeah, Johnny Who Entertainment is a fan-based production team which uh, involves 
all of us Doctor Who fans to do what we love and uh, to walk away with uh, with films, uh, what we've all made together. And uh, what we do is we not just make a great friendship, but we uh, we make brilliant films together. And you can watch them on YouTube and uh, on Facebook. And if anyone is interested, literally just give me a message and we can tell you what DVDs are available at the time. But we've got... Any recommendations? Oh, that's a tricky one. There is a lot of good ones. <laughs> um, I'd definitely say the Sonsara and Experimentation uh, version, what we did, is pretty good. Um, we've got uh, Power of the Daleks regen, what we've done on that. Because uh, then it's all in colour. Instead of it being oh. that... Uh, animation stuff right. uh, so it's nice to see it done by the books okay. uh, so that, that's a good one what's going to be coming out very soon and there's many many more just just give me a link up and uh, I can give you loads of names of things what's coming we also do uh, Blake 7 uh, twists Ooh. as well with uh, Doctor Who so we clash the Federation from Blake 7 with Doctor Who unit and stuff like that so you have like lots of battles and things okay. like that it's lots of great stuff we're doing at the moment we are making a Dalek story which is a series we're doing before Day of the Daleks okay. so it gives you a better long run storyline of the rebels uh, from the future and how it all came along about styles uh, and the delegates being blown up so what if the house remained blown up I like the sound of that. Yeah, so we've got that to come in a big series coming mm -hmm. soon. Check out the Facebook, check out the YouTube, and yeah, yeah, fantastic. We are two seconds into it, and John Levine has been very nice and uh, offered to come say hello to us for a second. Well, I would love to say hello. What would you like to ask me? <laughs> um, it's just in ugly, are you enjoying this kind of weekend? Is this the kind of event that you're typical to do? Well, let me tell you, I've been in the show now, as you know, it's for 51 years ago that we did The Demons. The reason I love these so much is, first of all, when you get my age, coming up to 80, your life becomes very, very isolated and lonely because everyone else is dead. <laughs> and the reason I love these, especially Oldbourne, is because this is the biggest story I ever did. This is what made Benton really shine. And I was aware of that. I knew the minute I walked onto the green and Barry Letts had written me a brilliant bloody part. And given that I wasn't a trained actor, no theatre, no rep, no voiceovers, I was just a menswear salesman on the Monday and then a, a, a walk-on on the Friday. That's how it happened for me. Um, but these kind of things, the reason I love it is I've always believed... The, the basic goodness in human beings is a wonderful thing. But at the moment, I believe the world is sinking into anarchy. There are more women being more children being victims of paedophiles. The disgusting side of our life is getting out of fucking control. And I actually think we've gone soft. You won't remember it, but back in my day, if you broke the law, you got the birch. You got three lashes of the birch, and you never did it again. These kids, all these little bastards that are causing the trouble, either kill them, or give them the birch. Now, that sounds a little serious, but you haven't seen the world like I have. Yes, Derek. So, BBC interview, won't be a minute. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm there. Right, thank you. I'll be there. So, yes, you obviously just gathered my cup of tea is all right. But, yes, and so the long and the short of it is, a couple of things I'd like to say. If any of you, whether you're gay, straight, or indifferent, if you fall in love with somebody and you betray that love, you deserve all the pain you get. And I tell you, it comes. You will pay for the rest of your life. The other thing, treat women with dignity. No matter whether you're gay, straight, or indifferent. Treat ladies. That's what we like to hear. Old people, if you see an old person's stomach, go and help her. If you see someone, anyone walking around an old person waiting to rob them, go and do something. Even if you get hurt, you've got to do something. So, unto thine own self be true. That's the first law of life I learned. Now, keep in mind, I was born in 1941. I was born Christmas Eve, eight minutes to midnight. Breach, jaundice, and dead. The Nazi bastards were bombing Southampton to kill all our Spitfires, which won the World War. Make no mistake, you young people, the Spitfire and those never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed to, by so many to so few. Mm -hmm. So my childhood was between 1941 and 1946. Hungry, isolated, my father away at war. When he came back, he hated me. So I grew up with the hate of my father. And then I guess what? I had a son and I hated him. How bleeding strange are we? As they say in Yorkshire, there's now queerer than folk. So, the long and the short of this, whoever sees this, 
it all looks great. I'm here with my little silk jacket from Hollywood, and I've got my little silk handkerchief, and I look quite good because all actors have a face, otherwise you wouldn't be in the business. But at the end of the day, my life has been one long emotional haul to try and find happiness. And then 10 years ago, I lost the only woman I love, and I've been suffering every day since. So all I'm saying to you young people, go for something, have a, have a dream. Don't dream big, and even if it doesn't work, we're all allowed a dream. You, I'm sure you've heard I'm writing a movie script, uh, I'm, I, 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 and everybody in Hollywood appears to want it. Now, you might think, whoa, whoa, whoa. A, it's not done yet. It's not over till the fat lady sings. I don't mind telling you now because I let it play out, but John Travolta, I know a friend of his who knows me, and he's the one that's interested in my movie. Now, he has one of the biggest production companies. And if John makes my movie, I'm not only going to become a millionaire. At the moment, I'm living on seven grand a year pension. I don't mind admitting it. I've been broke for five years. My wife died, my mum died. I was out of the country for 50 years, so my pension was small. I've only just survived. I don't smoke, I don't drink apart from a Guinness about once a month, and I don't eat meat. I've been vegetarian for over 45 years. That's why I look healthy. I've kept my hair, I've kept my nails. And so all I'm saying is look, just think about it. Look unto yourself, look into your own heart. And if you don't stand up for an injustice, then you're fucking useless. If you let it go, It'll multiply, and someone else will get it. And there's a couple of things I'd love to say, but they're so awful. Something that these men are doing to women in Africa, which has destroyed my soul at the moment. So, and I feel everything. That's my problem. I, I cry too much. I, I, I. Anyway, so this is John Levine, Oldborn, 2020, signing off, going to get my own cup of tea. So thank you, well too, deserved. for being so professional. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Bless you. We can go on now. We're not going to get better than <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Truth is, Thank I've you. always been good at ad-libbing. That's my one talent. Mm. I can ad-lib till the cows come home. <laughs> you're good. You're lovely people. Keep Thank you. Up. Thank you very much. Wow. Just oh. flip this shot. Same shot, but just flipped. Okay. So it's not utterly terrifying. Now I look like a, <laughs> now I look like a terrifying BBC reporter. Oh, gosh. It's more terrifying than BBC reporter. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, that's Ace. Uh, yeah, when it, uh, that's not Ace, that's uh, Sergei. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. When are you guys ready? Here we yeah. are with Sadie Moore. Hello, thank you. Fantastic. And yeah, that was a, a terrible intro. That was a terrible intro. Let me try again. It's awful. Mm. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are with Sadie Miller. Welcome. And how has it been this weekend so far for you? Oh, it's been lovely. I mean, the weather's been a bit mixed, mm. um, but I've just come down for the Sunday and it's been really, really nice. Um, lovely to see people and get to touch people appropriately, <laughs> of course, but <laughs> nice to... Uh, <laughs> you should probably edit that out. Yes. <laughs> um, no, it's been absolutely lovely. Really, really awesome. And I've, I've only recently watched the episode, so it's mm. been very cool to, to see it all come to life. And how's it been speaking with fans uh, who now have known Sarah Jane for so many years and now you're stepping into those shoes, of course. Uh, how has that been, how's the reception been from fans? Oh, it's been wonderful. It's so uh, surreal and just humbling, really. And people bring, you know, beautiful, um, you know, gifts and books and drawings and artwork. And it's, Im yeah, amazing, really. It's just been um, fantastic to see Mum's character played out still after all these years. It's lovely. And that's such a unique experience, I suppose. Not too many people get to play their, their, their mother or their father's <laughs> character, you know. Yeah, for maybe, sure. maybe Sean Pertwee will one day, yeah, you know, yeah. right? But um, how has that been for you? How, how have you felt going into those shoes to play that character? Sure, I mean, it was obviously very intimidating at first when we did um, the Cyberman story. Um, but as time's gone on, I've tried to take her in a, not a different direction, but make her more my own. I feel mm. a bit more comfortable now, I think, because I... I, uh, I feel like I'm moving it away from trying to impersonate my mum. Mm. <laughs> I don't have the John Coleshaw talents to do that, unfortunately. So um, being able to just uh, have my own spin on it, I think has made it a bit com more comfortable. And doing that, I suppose you've had a chance to really look into that character. Sure. But what do you think Sarah Jane's legacy is? Oh gosh, it's so difficult to say. I mean, she is obviously a feminist, mm. uh, first and foremost, and I think being a feminist now has kind of become a bit of a, a dirty word, maybe, but I think... Real feminism her, is common sense these days. Totally. You're either a feminist or an arsehole, aren't you, really? Mm. Um, and I think that strong female energy is, is what she carries through, I think, which can translate to whatever anyone identifies as uh, universally, which I think is amazing. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I think, I, think I, I have one question, and this is just a bit of a fanboy question. Um, if you could do anything with Sarah Jane in the audio adventure, so any Doctor, any story, what Ooh. would that be? Well, it's a bit cheeky. I would love to, I would love to write a story mm -hmm. for Sarah, and probably I think Tim is the third, the third Doctor. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm allowed. Nick, <laughs> get to it. If, uh, if they'll accept any of my scripts, yeah. we'll wait and see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed on that. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks so much. Oh, I, I do have one more. If you want to, if, if you want to hit record. Yeah, sure. Sorry about this. No, that's all right. Um, so your Monday for Sarah Jane adventures got her own show for a long time. Do you think it would be good to have that in the big finish range for Sarah Jane adventures continuing? Ooh, yeah. I I think yes. With maybe the kids in it because mm. I, I don't know what they would do with mum um mum's character but i would love to see where you know clyde luke and rani where they go next even if they did it as a um not as a long running thing even mm. just as a couple of one-offs but i'm not sure because obviously they're all quite successful now in their own right how that would work but i think that would be really make, interesting make rani meet the rani Yes, that yes. confuses me so much when I see it on Twitter. I'm like, I don't understand. What is the Rani? Someone it's help. It's okay, the show forgot about the Rani. Oh no, it? oh so, god, a sore point. Mm, it's all right. <laughs> awesome, right. Thank uh, you so much. Oh no, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. There we go. So, Derek Martin. Uh, yes, sir. Bit of a Pertwee era regular. Could you. Uh, yes, I did five. As we can see there. There we go. That's uh, Romans, Massacre, Highlanders, Web of Fear, Mind of Evil, and Bastards of Death, Inferno, Spearhead from Space, and Image of the Fendal. As, as you can see, the first a... one was William Hartnell. Yeah, I, I admit, I, I did it's not probably, know that, actually. There's not many people that are still alive that worked on the William Hartnell. Yeah. Life. Romans. I think I, I like the Romans. I thought it was quite under. It was a unusual bit of an attempt for a bit more of a comedy-based episode. And it was in black and white, mm. which again, that whole kind of like film noir with the shadows and the lighting mm. makes a big difference. So. Mm. Um, I mean, for, for me personally, I'm, I'm quite, my interest in Doctor Who is very niche in that my eras that I prefer is Hartnell through to Pertwee. Right. So that, that very specifically, that's kind of my yeah. era. Yeah, Trout, and I did a couple for him, so mm. Weber Fear was one of his, I think. Mm. Weber, yeah, with Weber Fear, yeah. There's a mm. picture there of it, yeah, with the paratroopers thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of uh, now I have to ask the generic questions that you probably always get, but like, what was it like working on the show? Is there any particular moments that jump out that you'd like to mention? Um, especially with, with, with more with poetry because I did more with him, mm. with John. Very nice man, easy to get on with. So was Troughton. He was a nice man. Partner was a bit doer and a bit. I don't know, he, d I d he didn't mix much. Mm. Whereas uh, Tom Baker, I worked with him as well, and he was okay. But on the whole, listen, over the years, it was very good, especially earning money, because mm. we do it for, for a living. And I'm getting still getting residuals and repeats and overseas sales oh, that's good. of all the different Doctor Who's that I've done. Mm. So which is like a little pension comes in. So as I say, it was great working on it and now I'm still yeah. <laughs> getting money from it. So you see your your role in it all is ended up being a bit more different to say John Levine who has a character where you you've just jumped in and filled a lot of different boots over the Oh yes, yeah, soldiers uh, of different units getting killed, uh, security guards, whatever. And always ended up with ah oh, uh, Maybe it's all the same character and you're just a time lord just jumping about. Whatever. You get shot, you get stabbed, you get thrown off a cliff, you get whatever. It's just oh, good fun. Good. So I've got to ask you, was there a specific episode in your large uh, filmography that you enjoyed working on? In the Doctor Who? Um, I would say all of them because they're all in... I mean, different director like Dougie Canfield, lovely director. I think you'll find most of the people that worked on these episodes will stand out and say how good he was. 
and he was very determined, always wanted it right, although he still had a great sense of humour. But as I say, all the doctors were good fun to work on, because everybody was like a family. It's a bit like EastEnders that I did. Mm. You're in a family. Of course, yeah. And the EastEnders whole well. thing is a family. So, no, I enjoyed every bit of it. There's no one that stood out. I mean, well, I suppose Web of Fear, because it's paying more money now since it's been re-released. So. Yeah, of course. Oh, I was going to say, how, how do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Because it was found in Nigeria or somewhere, wasn't mm. it? The, yeah. It's been re-digitised and whatever, and it looks like it was just shot. Yeah, so it looks brilliant. It look gorgeous. So it's, it's one of the more cinematically pretty episodes. Yeah. And it's, as I say, it's selling again and again and again. So. Mm. It's, it's one of my favourite ones, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I confess, I, I didn't even know you were in some of those. I, I kind of associate you most with the Pertwee era. So it's a complete surprise to me that you were in... Yeah, all them, yeah. Trout and Tom Baker was Hartnell's the well. last one, yeah. So mm. Hartnell ones were done at studios at Hammersmith. Mm. Right by the river. Hammersmith Studios, right, it's where the bridge is, it's round to the left, because all the others were done at BBC, at Television Centre and stuff, yeah. and wherever, so, but it was good fun, I loved it all, and still loving it, coming here to these signings, these comic cons. I, I was going to ask how you've enjoyed and the weekend. You meet old friends that you haven't seen for a while, like John, uh, uh, Fraser, and John Coleshaw, uh, all of them. And, it's not, and also, a lot of the punters over the years at different places in Western Supermare, in Essex, up north, same punters turn up. Mm. Same people, so you get to know all friends. It's brilliant, it's good. Awesome, uh, I think that's just about it. Now, the last one is purely just a personal request. My mum is quite a fan of EastEnders. I was wondering if you could get to just look in the camera and just say hello, Nikki, or something. Is that her name? Yeah. Hello, Nikki, it's me, Derek Martin, or as you know me, Charlie Slater. I've got a cab outside. Just give me a buzz if you want to go anywhere. Fares down to me. You keep safe, you keep well, speak soon. That is wonderful. That's yep. awesome. Right, I believe that's it. So thank you very much and I hope you've had a, thank you've you, had a sir. wonderful thank you so weekend. Oh, I have. It's great. Nice of me. Two new fellas. So firstly, wonderful costume. We love this. Thank so you very much. You, we understand that you were here yesterday. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? Yeah, it was quite good. Um, apart from the weather, as you can <laughs> see today, it's pretty... Um, England, right? Yep. In the middle of August, a nice hot summer day and it's raining. So, yeah, we went round different... Um, the actors and the production staff. We went... We, the plan was that we'd go to different sections and they will talk about their experience of Devil's End and Demons. Um, we had John Ruffin, Richard Flanking, um, Katie Manning, um, and a couple other guys. Um, they all ex explained their experiences. And then it was a lovely day. People were just mixing and socialising. Mm, absolutely. And just the, being in this location generally is a, a treat, isn't it? It's so. amazing. And the best thing about this location, unlike other set locations, it hasn't changed. Mm. It's still got the same feel as it was 50 years ago. Yeah. If you go to the green or to the church, it looks exactly the same to how it was 50 years ago. Absolutely. Nothing's really changed. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think you've got some stuff uh, to sign. Yes. Can we uh, take what, what you've brought in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I have one of my favourite Doctor Who stories, Battlefield. Ooh. The last unit story of the classic series. Mm -hmm. And one of the um, downtimes thing, mm. which is John Lafine's own dedicated called Wartime Chronicles. So I'm going to get John and Sophie to sign these for me. Incredible. I have already got Sylvester McCoy and Angela Bruce, who was... That's so impressive. How did you manage her? <laughs> what, <laughs> I can't remember her name. Era, <laughs> I can't remember her name. I'm so sorry. Angela Bruce was Brigadier yep. Bambera. Really? Willem yes. Bambera. Yes. I'm still catching up on late seven. Josh, you can start. Do you want to do this interview? <laughs> 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 Uh, 
Right, Fraser, thank you so much for giving us a few words. Fine, yeah, yeah a few words. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I think I have to ask first and foremost, you're enjoying your weekend? Yes, I've, I've never been to Oldbourne. Um, and it's lovely. The little village is a beautiful, beautiful village. Uh, and we stayed in a nice pub last night and had a nice meal, and uh, everybody has been so friendly. It's really good. Mm. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, and I suppose the next question is the question that kind of, you know, every single person has ever been in Doctor Who. So, you know, this was, I imagine, quite a relatively small, mundane job that you started off with. <coughs> yeah. Did you ever imagine you'd be here? No, no. I, I was supposed to be in the Highlanders, four episodes, and then that became more episodes. In fact, when I left Doctor Who after three years, uh, I, I look at photographs of me wearing the kilt and the shirt. And I, I, if I'd known I'd be here 40 odd years later, I'd have kept the kilt, the boot, the, you know, the whole costume because, you know, I wore it at conventions, you know. But I never, once I'd finished, even though it was a three year job, I thought, well, that's it, Fraser, you're going to another, another job. And that was it. Mm. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you just a bit about the animations that are going on. Oh, yeah. Because obviously, unfortunately, a lot of Pat's stuff is yeah. gone into the Netherlands. Um, yeah. Netherlands. Ne ne the, the Netherlands. No, the Netherlands is a place. That, that, that's double Dutch to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, we, we've had a lot of Trouts and stuff that's been animated now. Do you yeah. have a particular favourite of any of those? How do you feel about them? Um, I think my favourite, to be honest, is going to be the next one I see because the first couple... They were trying it out and trying different ways, and I thought, yeah, that's not bad, but um, now I think they're getting better at it. But mm. I did say to Anne-Marie Walsh um, at a convention, I said, are you going to do the Highlanders? And she said, no, because it, it, there's so much tartan, the kilts are going to be too difficult. So we got all the red coats and stuff. And I think now the Highlanders, because they are getting better at it, I think they'll be able to do the Highlanders, I, I think, because they're getting the tartan, tartan ready and stuff. I think it would sell quite well based on the fact that it is Jamie's first story. Mm. Plus, it wouldn't be too difficult because they're entirely animating just human characters in that one. Yeah, and it's only four episodes mm. as well. And you know. they are filling out the library now. I think now, on the DVD shelf, at least, Pat has more episodes yeah. on there than not on there, which I, didn't used to be the case. I think it's yeah. only about we, four got, or five got, episodes. Yeah, we've got the Space Pirates hasn't been done. Uh, it's about six, maybe six or seven stories that still yet to be animated. Mm. But no, the, uh, I have fun doing the, the documentary that, that gets tagged on to the end of the animation. I, I love the documentaries. Mm. Honestly, sometimes mm. the, the, the documentaries can be better than the actual well, episodes, yeah. hearing everyone's stories. Did you see the one where we went to the Fury from the Deep, mm. the, the mm. sea force? It was great because I love sa sail yeah, and I, sailing and ships. And we went out there. We were, but unfortunately, I couldn't climb up the fort because I've got this rotator cuff. I thought the step was going to be like that, which is perfect, but the, it's a ladder, hmm. and of course, going up a ladder, you can only, you've got a, and I just didn't want my shoulders to suddenly go like that, and ooh, yeah. into the, uh, the North Sea or whatever. Hmm. What, do you, what do you think of the uh, Fury from the Deep animation? That, that was good, I think... I, I, I specifically yeah. asked about that one, because I know with that one, they were a bit more, they were a bit more creative with the animation style, yeah. with the whole, like... Well, like, Victor Madden looks like Victor Madden hmm. in, in uh, Fury from the Deep, you know. I think that, again, they're getting better like that. And I do, I know some people don't like it, but I, I love the little gags that the, the animators put in, like a wanted poster and Roger Delgado in yeah, the police station. Yeah, retconning him in. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think that's fun. I know some stalwarts go, oh, it's, it's, I know there's a lot of purists who are like, no, it shouldn't be animated. It should be four by three, <coughs> black and white, blurry. But I think, no, have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, you know? exa yeah me too, exactly, yeah. Mm. And I think the next ones is Evil of the Daleks and then Abominable Snowmen. That, that's right, yeah. We, um, I think I can safely say we've, we did some uh, documentary work for, for both of them as well. Yeah. The Evil of the Daleks. Um, yeah, where do we go? Right. It's, it's funny because I'm, I'm, I'm pausing because when I filmed them, Chris Chapman, who is the producer, director, whatever, I said, oh, I'm good. He said, no, no, Fraser, don't, 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 put it on, don't put it on YouTube. Don't put it on your Facebook. I said, but why? If you put it on, the fans will be, oh, when's it coming out? When's it? And they'll, they'll start saving money. I can't, if you suddenly ring, it comes out next week, they'll go, oh, I've, I've spent my money now. Mm. You know, if you, they'll start saving. I'm saying, Chris, they'll start saving now. You know, let us tell them. Let's tell them. So I'm, I hope I'm let the cat out of the bag. You're quite all right. Uh, so this is the bloke that runs it. 
<laughs> Guilty, <laughs> pretty much. Charged. Yeah. What are you doing to us? <laughs> I have travelled three hours to come stand in the rain with a bunch of old people. <laughs> and uh, the worst part is I'm having a wonderful time. And where, uh, where do you come from? Where do you come I'm from, from Manchester. Josh over there is from Liverpool. OK. That is quite, that is quite a way then. Yeah, it's about three and a half hours it wow. was with the journey wow. down. But uh, we were just saying earlier, we've had like a full conversation. It occurred to me halfway through, maybe I should, maybe I should film some of this. <laughs> uh, I used so to this live in Cheetah, uh, Stockport Way. Oh, yeah. So I, yeah. Know, I know kind mm. of... Your neck of the woods fairly So well. we were saying this is the second event akin to this that you've held yes. for Devil's End. That's right, yes. 2019, we had an afternoon uh, at Devil's End, hmm. um, which is the first sort of event of this kind Kate, my wife, and I tried uh, and have produced. We normally produce theatre shows. Hmm. Um, and we thought, oh, well, let's see. And we had Doctor Who events in theatres before. But we thought, oh, well, let's try being outside on location. Um, and we sort of put our toe in the water with that to see how popular it was. Hmm. And it was very popular. Suddenly, we, it, was, it was sold out so quickly. So we thought, last year, 2020, we'd do a weekend because it doubled, doubled the popularity. Um, and, of course, as everyone knows, in 2020, not much happened. So, in some <laughs> ways... In some ways, we're here now for the 50th anniversary. Perhaps mm. we wouldn't, you know, have done the weekend again uh, two years in a row. So, yeah, 50th anniversary um, of uh, the Demons recording. So here we are in Oldbourne for a weekend this time rather than just an afternoon. And it is a wonderful place to do the location because even just driving down, I'm like, oh, look, look at all the thatch roofs and everything. Yes. It's, a, it's a gorgeous area to be in for. Mm. It really looks at and very much fingers crossed, but the weather seems to have improved just a little bit. Touch wood. It couldn't have got much worse, could it? No, it really couldn't. <laughs> I blame us all, personally, but... Uh... Us all, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Um, but, yeah, it, yeah, as you say, the weather has um, turned against us a bit, unfortunately. But we're inside Oldbourne Memorial Hall. We're going into St Michael's Church, the actual church that mm. everyone saw the outside of in the Demons later on. So the whole village have been very kind and accommodating to us. Uh, and so welcoming, and the, and the pubs, the blue boar, and the crown here, and the heritage the, centre. Uh, one of those was the uh, for the cloven hoof in the. That's right, the blue boar was the mm. cloven hoof. That's right. Yes, yes. Is that open? Yeah, it's open. Yeah, you wonderful. Can have, you, you can have. I had a lovely meal in there the other night. Mm. Uh, so I'm, no, I'm going to try and nip in there. Have a genuine, authentic Pertwee era pint. And have you been up to the Four Barrows? No, no, not yet. That is worth going. Where Professor Horner's dig was mm. uh, in the Demons. It's about a mile, perhaps a bit more than that walk up the hill but if you can avoid the rain it's really worth it it's really atmospheric you can imagine Bessie going up there and taking the Doctor and Joe in the dark literally as we were on the way in the car down we were like you know it's just, we're probably driving over one of the roads where they did the whole the, the heat the portal sign and thing. the sign as well yeah absolutely mm. yeah yeah and well that's the great thing about Auburn that it seems like you could imagine the filming finished yesterday couldn't you it's still so oh, it is like solid in time yeah we, we actually got a bit of a funny video earlier of the, of the spot where they were doing the ring around the roses thing we, oh yes, yes we got a bit of a funny video of a bit of a dance there yeah yeah well that, it, it's it's so familiar if you've seen the demons when you first arrive on the green it's quite magical isn't it mm. and actually it is every time after really but that very first time you think oh gosh it's just like walking into an episode because it is so unchanged as opposed to if you, if you go check out like the invasion a lot of the areas from that are going to be retrofitted for the modern day. Absolutely that, absolutely that. But here, as you say, thatch roofs and quaint cottages, and you can still see Miss Hawthorne's cottage on the green, can't you? And Crooked Corner, where they did the fire, the bazooka at um, Bok, and the, where um, Miss Hawthorne met the master on the corner by the church. So it's all so recognisable. Because, so, because there was so much location filming done at, uh, well, at here, yeah, you watch the episode and you get a very good sense of the entire layout of the village. Completely. Like, I, I knew my way round here because I've seen the demons. And have you been up the road where the uh, Morris dancers came along and came into the green? Again, it's sort of, that's what sticks in my head when I go along there, that they were dancing and then suddenly it turned sinister. No, it's lovely to be here. Lovely. And see, I was, I was saying earlier about how it definitely doesn't feel like a convention, because at conventions, yes, there's a lot to see and a lot to do and learn and listen to, but it feels like there's a very strong level of security between the guests and uh, the, the people visiting. Whereas here, it feels it's a lot more cosy. It's the way I describe it. It's a lot more cosy. Everyone's very oh, friendly you. and approachable. It's set up a really good atmosphere oh, for that's it. That's kind of you. Thank you. I mean, obviously, we have to be secure as well and look after it, all the guests and make sure everything's safe and sound in a COVID world. But 
I think you can police these things with a small P mm. rather than a, a capital P. And so finding that balance is tricky. Here's my wife, Kate, my co-organiser. Uh, is it time for me to go? No, no, please, please, carry on. Carry no, no, you need me, don't you? No, no. Are you no, sure? No, no. You must have come over for a reason. No, that's all right. We'll catch up with you shortly. OK, I've been let off the hook. That's Kate, my wife, my better half. OK, well, I'll, I'll let you off by all means then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Um, what time is it we're carrying on with? Uh... Next spot at the church at one o'clock. Oh, fantastic. Great. So I'm joined once again by Sophie Aldred. Thank you again. Oh, for... it's such a pleasure. Oh, great stuff. So how have you found this weekend so far? Oh, it's been amazing. I'll tell you what's been so great is seeing so many people, seeing mm. so many old friends. Like I walked in and Richard Franklin comes running over towards me. Now, Richard, I first met him at my very first convention. When, really? Yeah, which was Panopticon in 87. Wow. And um, I'd been invited, nobody knew who on earth I was. And I walked into the green room and there was Richard, mm -hmm. John Levine, Nicholas Courtney and John Pertwee wow. over in the corner. And I thought, oh, that's my <laughs> Doctor Who and that's Eunuch. <laughs> And I was just as much yeah. of a fan as, you know, and, and then John beckoned me over, John Pertwee, and, you know, come oh. here, come here, sit here. And I was welcomed into the, the Doctor amazing. Who fold. So, you know, to, to be here with yeah. Richard all those years later, gorgeous. It's wonderful. And just the setting here is so casual. I, I really mm. like that. It feels like fans really can just interact with people. With this. Yes. It's a really wonderful atmosphere because it's a bit like a sort of extended... Um, I don't know, it's a bit like a wedding or something, you know, <laughs> yeah. a tea party or something where mm. you've got loads and loads of your friends around and you just yeah. have a chance to talk to them. It's oh, really fabulous. The conventions are lovely, but there's a big divide between the special guests and the fans there. Yeah, on a general level, but this, again, just feels like a day out, really. Yes. I, 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 re I really like the vibe of this, I must say. Yes, because there are conventions where literally the fans stand in a queue all day, yeah. get to see somebody for... 30 seconds you mm. know we from our point of view we get our heads down we sign like yeah. this you know that's fine too there's room for that and and obviously people um go and cosplay and they meet yeah. together and stuff but i for me i prefer this intimate mm. yes. smallish gathering in a nice place mm. in a place which means something to fans as mm. well yes and i feel like as, as well especially after the past two years we've had having things outside having things more generalised, so uh, there's less people as well. I feel like all these things are more positives and should be considered more for the future, really. Yes, let's hope we can do this more often. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and I have to say, it was so cool to see you wearing the ace jacket for the photo shoot. Well, Ian, who, um, who's, book, who's booked me for this day today, mm. um, he called me yesterday just as I was about to leave the house and he said, <gasps> Could I ask you a huge favour? Could you bring the jacket? And uh, and I, I'd got this little suitcase, yeah. and I thought, do you know, for Ian, yes, I will. <laughs> so I I said to my son, could you get me the big suitcase? Because I knew it would take more room. And I sort of unpacked, repacked, and dashed out the door. Wow, awesome. But yes, um, we're here in 2021 now. We're we're about a year removed from um, your book. Um, at Childhood's End, sorry. Yes. And uh, that celebrated the impact of Ace on the show. How would you describe Ace's impact as a character? Gosh, well, I suppose she's had an, a, a long-lasting impact. You know, she was, in a way, the first companion who was a real... Um, she, was, she was somebody for the Doctor to kind of educate, yes. in a way. That was it. It was sort of like the doctor became a sort of it was a mentor role, mm. um, and Ace had a lot of the storyline, which was mm. an, another kind of unusual thing. Um, and then I guess I mean the the the, the longevity is mm. due to the fact that people just loved seeing this very realistic character. Mm. She was written in a very real way. Mm -hmm people could identify with her because she was of her time yes. and that sort of strong female character has mm. uh, has lasted and then in the new series you know when that came back mm -hmm. um, I think Russell T Davis very much used 
the sort of last story that that was survival yeah. as a kind of lift-off point for uh, for Ace's character for, for Rose. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say there's a lot of parallels between Ace and Rose. I think. Yeah, I think Rose is a lot more emotionally mature mm. than Ace. And uh, <laughs> but well, yes, Ace is are. calm. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there are parallels, though, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great to see you again. Great. So, yeah, today we've all been here to meet some of the stars from the, the Demons, the classic John Pertwee adventure here in the lovely, sleepy English village of Aldbourne. And we've met John Levine. We've met uh, we've met Richard Franklin. We've met Fraser Hines, Sophie Aldridge, Sadie Miller, some of the fantastic stars of the sh of the show. And it's just been a lovely day out really to meet fellow Doctor Who fans who appreciate the show uh, you know and uh, have people of all ages have clearly come together to see this show and I think it goes to show Doctor Who's universal appeal has endured through its almost six decades of life you know I think it's a fantastic programme and I think uh, everyone here has come here to appreciate that fact so yeah no as I said you know uh, yeah you missed out who didn't come today but I, I think uh, but do make sure you go to the f future events to see uh for the Doctor Who stars and keep watching the show because we'll have a new Doctor scene and a new showrunner scene so we'll be interested to see how that pans out so yeah let's see what happens <laughs> and as you can see we've got a wealth of guests here to join us throughout the next uh, next 45 minutes or so starting off with well two people who were here uh, Any memories you have of filming here? Oh, I mean, how long was it? Um, well, first of all, I mean, for my part, it was the best episode I ever done. The Barry Letts wanted me to come back the end show, and I never had such a big part. So obviously, I was there. And it was also because the BBC were on strike at that moment, and instead of having the usual two days um, filming, I think we ended up with ten or twelve. I'm not quite sure, which is why the demon looks more like a movie uh, than the average Doctor Who episode. And of course, also, Barry Red gave each and every actor, even what I call with smaller bits, he gave us the most beautiful dialogue. I think it was the best show I ever done. And I think that's why, you know, especially the fact that I even saw me just down the road. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, you know, we just did a documentary about three months ago, and they asked me if I had the power, uh, which I've never done. It was the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> village came out as you know as extras so all i can say is it was just wonderful and the fact that we're here 51 years later i think is proof positive well, I, I think actually i mean the, the 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 most important thing about any play is the script and the script was written by a guy leopold which was as you know barry letts um and it was, it, it was a, a tailor-made script. Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a script that was written for a particular cast, us. Yes. And, um, you know, that was a, 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 a rare treat. Um, yes, uh, I think um, most of... <laughs> Uh, the stuff that I had to do was under the crypt. In the crypt, that's yeah. right, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and um, there's actually, it's beautifully filmed, as and you will uh, know. Was the weather as, as, as unkind to you? Uh, yes, it was. It changed every day. <laughs> but, yeah, they had, they had snow. I think we had snow one day, rain wow. the other day. And they had to put a special line in, you know, freak, freak. The brigadier had to say freak weather can. I mean, you back me up, lads. Yeah. Freak weather conditions. <laughs> Or freak actors, like one or the other. <laughs> I expected, actually, at that point, there would be a chorus of freak yes, weather. Yes, yeah. Yeah. No, so it was just I a thought everyone would sing out. Yeah. Katie, of course, and Roger, Roger Delgado, the greatest master in the world. And, uh, of course, we obviously missed them because they were part of our lives. But, yeah, the biggest story we ever made. So, at the end of the day, it was just a joy. Three Doctors is my second favourite because it was with Pat Troughton. Adorable. Now, what Thanks. questions might some of you have for our... Uh, for our demon stars here. Everybody looks down now. Anyone? Raise a hand if you've got a question. Don't worry if you ask a question. Everybody will look at you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fraser's got his hand up. You can come later. How long are you going to be, John? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my cue, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, we're just up here for ten minutes and then we're going to alternate. Everything, so. yes. Come on, one question. Come on. Over here, sir. What's your yes, question? yes, yes, yes. Oh, um, there's a 
There's a, an interview with the director, Christopher Barry, on the, on the new Blu-ray where he talks about he always felt that he was an actor's director. Yes. Could you talk about what your experience was like working with him? Uh, well, he, he did exactly what you've just said. He seemed to understand uh, the capability of each particular actor. And like John Pertry said to me the first time he joined, um, Nick and I helped John out an awful lot. And it was John that made me realize, he said, the pressure of being a leading man in such a well-known show is awesome. And I think Chris Barry just understood. And I also think that because Barry Letts had written it, and you've got to remember, Barry was in the first movie I ever saw as a young man uh, called, um, um, <laughs> I forgot what it was called. Um, it was a war movie, and he was in it with Jack Hawkins and that. But anyway, he, he just loved the fact that everything that Barry wrote, like Richard just said, fit every actor, which is why we were so surprised. I mean, even my part, usually I only had two lines in any episode, but I had a whole huge amount to do, plus the fighting, of course, because I was the dumbest. They figured, get rid of the dumb one first. <laughs> but yeah, it, so he was really a miracle. It happened right at the right time. Right director, right story, right location, right group of actors. <coughs> I hope that answers your question. If anyone has a question for me, will you please shout? Because I'm <laughs> deaf. But I, I couldn't hear the question. Um, I was going to say, Richard, the gentleman was asking about directors, and obviously you direct yourself. Yes. What, do you, what makes a good director? What considerations do you have to have when you do it? Well, that's a, a very long question. <laughs> it's a very long answer. Um, I think you, uh, the first thing you've got to do is cast the playwright. Because, quite frankly, the director is unimportant in a certain sense. It's 60 percent. You've got to organize. You've got to organize. But um, uh, it's 60 percent of the work is done by actors, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, that's, a, that's the short answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'll do, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> next question, please. Yes. Who's got a next question? And then we're off. Hands up if you would. Oh, gentlemen. Oh, look, come on, lad. Yeah, no, a gentleman over oh, there, Oh, right, sir. right, right. Yeah. Far away. Yes. yes. You with the flowered hat on, sir. I was just going to ask, if you were asked, would you be willing to make an appearance in the new series of Doctor Who? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in a New York minute. But it's not going to happen, so that's why I can say it so joyfully. No, it, it, oh, I nearly swore again. I've got to walk Easy, easy. God, I've got such a foul mouth. That's my father. I blame my father. Well, I was breastfed as a child, you know, by my father. It just never was going to work. Um, <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I thought that was God then. What did you say? <laughs> Why wouldn't it sounded like God, didn't it? Why wouldn't it happen was the question. Oh, well, because there's so many of us. And UNIT's dead now. We don't call it United Nations Intelligence Task Force now. It's called something else, isn't it? Unilever, what, what's it called? Yeah, so that's why. Plus the fact that we're too old. What about you, Richard? Would you be in, in the new series? In another role, perhaps? Or you go in a new Hayes? series if they ask you, Richard. I most certainly would, yes, because my uh, last experience was so happy. And the fact that it was so happy is evidenced by the fact that all you have turned up 50 years after um, uh, after we shot. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very okay, much. Well, that's Thank very you. Nice. Next question. Who's got another question they'd like to fire? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, question for John. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, what was it like having a love interest for Miss Hawthorne? Oh, my goodness. Oh, you found out. Well, I think at the end of the day, at the, you know the last scene at the Maypole when Katie and John were together and, and Nick, Richard asked Nick for a drink, he said, I'd rather have a pint, whatever. We had a feeling that Damaris had a little soft spot for me and that she told someone that John Levine was very sweet. <laughs> I'm supposed to be butch, not sweet. And when we got up to the Maypole, I was, sometimes I got embarrassed as an actor because as I relentlessly told you, I had no training and there were times well, when I didn't, much of know, a dancer. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And so what happened is we had that scene with her and I, would you like to dance with me, Sergeant Benton? Now, John and Katie, were the ones that knew she had a bit of a, not a crush, but she kind of, and the look on my face wasn't as an actor, it was the fact that John's looking at me and saying, you're screwed now. <laughs> um, so that, that, that's the end of that story, but it was a wonder. She was adorable. She was adorable. Thank you I think much. there were some other people in the scene, actually. Oh, was there Richard? Yeah, I didn't notice. sort of flapping around with, uh, with those handkerchiefs. Oh, oh the Morris dancing. dancing, yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> Another question. Who's got another question for us? One more person. Yeah. Who's got another question? One last one then. There's a hand at the back. A young hand at the back. Yes. 
Oh, my love, I miss them. If you could do as... Actually, come on, come yeah, on come down on, here. Come Just on, come on down. Come say hello. Come down here. Come down and see Brucey. Yeah, we are. Come on. And then you can pose your question, if you don't mind. Because I, I love kids, you know. I used to go to school with them. There we go. <laughs> there we Slip are. Slip the odd one now in there. Now, then. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, yeah, Take your seat there. just there. Take your seat there. Oh. And what's your question? What would um, you... If you could do a story with any new Who doctor, who would it be? Any new Who doctor? Yes. Oh, the lady, the lady now is a brilliant actress. That's the one I'd like to work with. And Richard. Um, did you ask uh, if, uh, if there were a new Doctor Who, which there will be, um, very shortly... Would we like to work would, with them? Would we like to work with them? Uh, yes, I would love to work with whoever is the new Doctor Who, um, especially... I think a male, because I think that uh, Doctor Who is really a male part. And I'm, I don't. I thought there might be an eruption of that. Well, but, do, do tell us why. Why do you why do you say that? Um, because it. Uh, I don't know. The male, the man, is the father figure uh, traditionally, and and. Um, I think that um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to really think very carefully. <laughs> You've dug a yeah. hole now, Richard. Yeah. We'll help you get out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think what Richard's trying to say is, is James Bond ever going to be a No, woman? I'm not. It... <laughs> <laughs> different strokes for different And I thought we were mates. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Well, there now, you go, go on then, Richard. What do you really think then? Uh, it's over to you. Oh, no, I've just done it. Well, I'm going to step in. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the trouble you've caused, your man? <laughs> no, no. Thank you very much. Thank you well, for we your hope question. You've got the answer. Bless you your heart. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now that uh, that requires courage. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And now. I think you could do another round for him because hey, he's there we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's have someone else joining us. Are we up here? Yes. What about Mr. Tim Trelaw? Would you like to join us, sir? Yeah. Hey. Now, quite frankly, I need help with these two. So you Come have worked the with them. You've worked with them. What do you mean you need help? <laughs> what do you mean? It's I'm staying out of it. It's, it's, more, it's more him. It's more him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how, what's it like working with these two? Oh, God. Big oh, it's no. absolutely awful. Oh. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. It's especially working with two original uh, Doctor Who legends. It's... Um, it's fantastic, and the two of them and Katie together is wonderful. Yeah. It's it's so evocative, and it very much helps me in what I'm trying to do as well. Um, and the advice that they offer and the support <laughs> is is just really really wonderful. So I'm very grateful. What like don't do it? Yes, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it like that. Do, do it better. Clearing yeah. up the cutlery, getting your that cups of tea. That sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what sort of advice do you mean? What kind of thing? Well, just um, sort of hints of what, yeah, how to do it better. <laughs> You've got to think now. Uh, yes, yeah. um, well, basically, you know, stories about John and um, what he would do in certain situations, yeah. uh -huh. um, certain mannerisms that he had, um, stories about the time as well to evoke the early 70s. So, uh, yeah, that's... Very, very helpful. Well done. That was very yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what's it like for the, for the two of you having a new leading man coming in? And uh, from, from, from someone you're so familiar well, with. Well, it's happened. weird to start with, and then you hear their voice, and you can't believe it. <laughs> you and John, I mean, I did my first one with them. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it's weird, because having worked with the real people, so sure, to speak, yeah. and then to hear that, the, how do you, I mean, like John, how do you do voices? And John remembered, my first job as an extra was with um, one of John's heroes, um, who, John, your impersonation hero, that I, Mike Yarwood. Uh, Mike Yarwood, another famous comedian. My first scene was they were fencing on the dual carriageway, like sword fighting, and I played a policeman, and I had to walk up and say, oh, you can't do that. And they said, yes, we can, and they pointed to the sign that said dual carriageway. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first with Mike Yarwood, and I always remembered, how do you do voices? And then Mr. Colshaw, and this gentleman came along, and it just, it's magic, because impersonation and voices is something I'd love to have done. But instead, I just settled for being a brilliant actor. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that's a joke, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not a bit, John's the impersonation expert. I do one. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh well, I, I built you up. <laughs> yeah. And what sort of uh, you know research do you have to do? It must be it seems like an endless task sometimes. What do you have to put uh, into that preparation? Well, basically rewatching episode. I must say, the demons is my favourite by a million miles. Have you been here before? Doctor Who. I have never been to Auburn before. It's a complete joy. 
to be here. Um, so watching old episodes, um, practicing various stances, that would be appropriate. Can we see one of your stances? Well, uh, oh, no, no, well no, there's no. that one, obviously, and then there's that, and then there's that. That's the three. Um, but, uh, and, and basically, when I'm in the studio, I've got his voice on my phone, so when, as happens quite often, especially when Katie starts doing a Welsh accent, yeah. in front of me the voice starts to go, so I have to sure, get back sure. into it. I must um, say, when you, uh, uh, certain phrases that you've uh, picked up from John, um, it's really quite creepy. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. well, no, uh, no, yeah. Creepy <laughs> in a nice way. Yes, creepy in a nice creepy. way. Yeah, thank because uh, I really... I believe that John is Was in the next cubicle. Oh, wow. yeah. great. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole thing is, is not obviously to impersonate, it's to try and provide the essence and spirit of the character. Of, yeah. of the character. Yeah. Um, because I can't do a total impersonation no, 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 of him. No. So <laughs> it, it is just trying to get some of the vocal mannerisms so that you have that sibling yeah. S. Um, and the very clipped, sort of almost upper class delivery. Yes, yes. Uh, John had a lisp, actually, and when he was at school, he used to get uh, teased for it. And that's where uh, he told me that uh, his original uh, characters in the Navy Lark, for instance, yeah. came from. Yeah. Right. And apparently he used to, Katie said he used to go through the script and start swearing when he saw the amount of S's yeah, to say in a particular yeah. line, yeah. <laughs> and to have to fight, to have to fight the yeah. stuff like that, you know. Yeah, and when he spoke Chinese, well, yeah, yeah. Yes. of course, yes, yes. Anyone okay. have a question for Tim that they'd like to ask him um, while he's here before I bring on our next guest? <laughs> Any quick Tim questions? You can ask them later on as well if you like. Sir, I was just wondering when you sort of acting as John Bertwin, how much of it is like your interpretation, how much of it is an imitation? Mm. Or a straight imitation, if you don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, as I said, I, I try to get his vocal tone and the rhythm of the way he speaks. And I'm pulling out certain words, um, you know, precisely and things like that. And, um, and yeah, so it, it's basically me being his, trying to be his third doctor but not impersonating him if you know what I mean it's just trying to get okay. out his spirit and that sort of energy he had which is a very sort of like upright and mm. and almost military energy I think yeah thank you very much which well, seems a good time to I'm going to swap our panel would Hi. you mind taking a seat John I'm very happy there? thank you everybody thank very you much around, John And the same questions could apply to, to you, Sadie, I guess, as well. How, how do you find that, obviously, a different angle in your, in your position, coming oh, on yeah. to play Sarah Jane? <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, I guess I can cheat it a bit, really, because she was my mum, so I think I have more of a natural <laughs> cadence um, to my voice that mimics hers. But, again, I, I wouldn't be able to do an exact interpretation of it, so I just try and put my spin on it. But listening to her old episodes and the way that she would phrase things... Um, because initially she didn't have a lot to do, so she would make a lot out of nothing. So I feel that's what I try and do sometimes, um, this, which lends itself, I think, to radio quite well. And it's so uncanny listening to you both. It's wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much for all the work you do. It's terrific. It really is. And, and, uh, quick, sorry, John. I, I was just going to say, I mean, the reception you got there oh. was partly for your mother. Yes. And um, you can tell how popular she was by the sort of reception you get. Yeah. And we've not seen you at many of these events so far, so questions I'm sure you've had for Sadie. So any, any hands up? <laughs> Look at that. I walked into that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Someone will have a question. Yes, sir. I was going to ask, we, we, we talked a little bit about um, your mum, but of course we all love your dad as well. Oh. <laughs> how's, how's he doing these days? Yeah, no, he's very well. Um, he turned 80 in April. Um, he's retired now really but yeah it's doing very well um 
because I suppose I should bring him along really as well. <laughs> did, does he ever talk about when he was in Doctor Who? Not really. Um, I haven't actually seen the episode that he did, Snake Dance. I need to watch that really. Um, but yes, I guess the family connection goes all over. I have to bring my kids next time. Get them involved. <laughs> 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 well, Paul's first episode as well, wasn't he? Yes, he is in. Oh uh, yes. <clears throat> yes, I forget about that. Yes, deep breath. Yes. Let's have a Did you watch uh, your question? mother uh, when she when she was playing the part? A little bit when I was growing up. Yes. Um, but not not until I've started doing the big finish. Where I've rewatched it again, but yeah. not really. <laughs> we have a a request here for Mr. Trelaw. I have a oh. question. Myself. Um, now, I'm always astonished by the knowledge of the Doctor Who army. But I've got a question for you. In The Demons, the first episode, there's a rugby match being watched by Sergeant Benton and Mike Yates. Who's playing? <laughs> you... Oh. you know. No? Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> really lovely. I won that one. Because Nick, Nick Briggs was delighted that he didn't know. It's England. South Africa. Is it? South Africa, yeah. There we are. That is yes. Your, that is your quiz question, yeah. I got one over on the... <laughs> Everyone's gone Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, let's bring on another guest. Shall we? Seems like a good time to uh, ask Fraser Hines to join us. There he is. We'll now sing hymn number <laughs> <laughs> Now, your, your era, wonderfully, is getting a, a resurgence through these yes. animations and Blu-rays really, yeah. out soon. You've been recording DVD, uh, Blu-ray extras. Yeah, we've got the e uh, Evil of the Daleks uh, is first. No, it's the second one. Web of Fear. Web of Fear. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, I don't like the animation because they're better actors than we are. <laughs> <laughs> they look a lot better. But it does, it's fun to hear. It's fun to go on the location as well. And, and, and do all the, the documentary part of it. That is good fun. Sure, sure. And what, you, what, what can you tell us? What secrets can you unve uh, unveil? If I told you, I had to kill you. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> but in a church. Actually, in a church, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a second. There's a pop you outside, don't worry. <laughs> um, I, I had to go down, we had to go down to Oldwich Tube Station, uh -huh. um, which was not as dark as our from Web of Fear. And there's, of course, it's not being used, there's no lift, so we had to walk 150 steps down. And I was helping them carry equipment. We did all the interviews. Going back up again, 150 on the turn all the time. Halfway up there, it was white spot before the eyes. Oh, gosh. We'll keep going in full. You know, that's, that's terrible. But it was good fun because, you know, Chris Chapman and Paul Vanessa, they're, they're nice people to work with, you know. But mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was going half. And you're going on the turn as well. Yeah, not, not the turn, but the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God forbid. Oh, sorry. I know. Fell exploded. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there was, um, and then I went to, I think I can tell you this. We went back to Snowdonia ah. for the um, Vonal Snowman thing. Uh, and we actually found the TARDIS, you know, where it actually landed. Oh, wow. It wasn't there. They, they you know, they <laughs> surprised me. <laughs> I was with Toby Hado, and we're walking along, talking, chatting. And I thought, yes, this is it. And, we up. and I looked around, and I saw this little sort of police box sign on, on a hill. And as I walked around, it, it was the TARDIS, oh. uh, where it stood all those years ago. And, I, and they surprised me with it. Chris Chapman, and he didn't tell me. Oh. He wanted to see my, my reaction. And, you know, ah, oh, it, you know, it was wonderful. I hugged it. And all that. So is that the animation after Evil of the Daleks? That's the animation after the... Yes, oh yeah. Brilliant. Now, in the Evil of the Daleks, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this one because... Oh, can I say it in church? Um, when, we, when we saw the Emperor Dalek, mm -hmm. this huge, this size... I don't know why it wasn't called the Empress, because he had the black balls here, here and two gold ones here, like a crown. <laughs> when you look at it, it should be the Emperor... And it's got baby Daleks coming off of it. It should be in the Emperor's style. But I had to say, um, God, please forgive me, I had to say to, to the doctor, hey, look at the balls on that thing. And I couldn't say it without laughing. And, and Derek Martin was tearing his hair up, for goodness sake. I said, I can't because it, and Patrick was. So we turn, turned it to, look at the size of that thing, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, it is, it is a big one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and we tried to sort of get into, into a lot of stories. And uh, in, in, in the two doctors at the very beginning, 
Uh, we did a producer's run, John Nathan Turner. And of course, I say, look at the size of that. And John Nathan, stop, stop, the script. Jamie looks to the scanner. Look at the size of that space station doctor. And Patrick, no, no, no. At the beginning of most shows, Jamie always says, look at the size of that big doctor. And I always go, yes, Jamie, it is a big one, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, you know, when you see the Eve of the Daleks, that's, how it, that's when it first that's started. Oh, that's right, when yeah, it right, started. Yeah. Thank you very much. Enough from me. We must have questions from the floor, I'm sure. Sir, so, uh, I wanted to ask Fraser, can you remember a favourite director during Doctor Who that you enjoyed working with? D Douglas Canfield, straight away. Yeah. Dougie Canfield, brilliant director. I mean, we had, we had some lovely... We had more great directors than, than not great, you know, if you know what I mean. Uh, but Dougie Canfield, he was always looking for a bit of humour. He, he, he was very stern. He would never tell you a joke. He would never say, you heard the one about the two nuns walking out. He'd never do that. But he, would, he, he always looked for a bit of humour. And he'd, he'd suggest a gag. Uh, in the invasion, when I jump into um, Tobias Stone's um, Rolls Royce, he said, you jump in at the back and then come around and sit in the shotgun seat. So the packer goes to get in, you're going, ha ha, I'm in the seat. And he was always looking for stuff like that. But um, Morris Barry was the one we... <sighs> In the um, Tomb of the Cybermen, you know, when, when Patrick and I take each other's, we were supposed to take Victoria's hand. Right. And we didn't do it on the rehearsals because Morris would say, no, no, stop, stop, it's not funny. So we only did it on the tape, and that's why our, hand, our hands are quite hard <laughs> because we couldn't say to the camera, how, how far are you shutting, uh, cutting your shot? Why? Well, so Patrick's on the tape, we just take it. So we into it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie Washington said, you're swine. What is the boys doing? They're supposed to take my hand. And she said, but she couldn't stop acting because it was ruined the tape. And we got to the end of the tape, and uh, Peter Bryan, the producer, said, that was great. And Morris said, no, we want to go another take. I didn't like that. He said, I liked it. Because we had that. somebody getting electrified, then Toblerone, he tries to open the doors, you know, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our thing for him anyway. And he said, that's just what you need, that bit of uh, da, da, comedy. Oh, phew. And then on with it. So, um, but no, uh, nice question. You know, Dougie Canfield and Michael Ferguson, and, and people, you know, we had a, we had more great fun directors. Uh, one director, we get up to the producers' run. He said, "Right, we're going to do the producers' run to make sure you know all your lines." Fraser, you're going to be Welsh. Patrick, you're going to be Irish. Debbie, you're going to be a Scotsman. You, so you had to do all your to make sure you knew your dialogue. You had to do it in different accents, which so you actually knew. You cried, I do know my script." But that was, no, we had more fun. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll come to you in just a second, sir. But first of all, I think, you know, so you can get time to ask all your questions to as many of our guests as possible. Let's have everybody else up, shall we? Let's have, uh, let's have John Coulter, yeah. let's have Derek Martin, and let's have Sophie Aldrin. Come and take your seat. Yeah. There we go. Thank you very much. Well, again, you know, thank you so much for joining us here in Auburn. Is it your first time, the two of you? Yes. I've yes. heard about it for years and years and years, and everybody always says, Auburn, and I've been thinking, well, you know, what's it like? It's a mythical place. It's fantastic. It's really lovely. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about yourself, John? Uh, it, it's the second time I've visited the village. I remember driving along the motorway some years ago and I saw the sign, Old Board. And I thought, I know what's there. And I just turned off oh. to have a quick look around and a pie in the pub. This is about ten years ago. Can you do it like Patrick Moore? <laughs> uh, well, yes, Old Bourne. Yes, uh, part of Wiltshire. A little bit dark skies around here. And, yes, Jupiter <laughs> and Saturn in alignment at the moment. Quite, quite fantastic. <laughs> The first time I've been here, yep. one thing I found out, if there's another war, this is the place to come because no one will find you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to living in a town. I've never seen so many trees. <laughs> <laughs> and my dog likes trees as well. So. <laughs> I want to say what the fondest memory of working at Patrick House and Deborah Orton was. Oh, oh, God, I could be here all, all day. You know, just <laughs> wonderful, wonderful people. And, and, and Wendy Padry, when Wendy joined as well. We just had so much fun. Uh, we, we just got on so well together. We, we teased each other mercifully. We, we debagged Patrick in the TARDIS <coughs> a couple of times. We, we, we had to burst out the TARDIS. 
And one time he came out with just a BBC towel around him because Wendy and I had bagged him. You, you know, um, I don't suppose you could do it nowadays because people would go, oh, how dare you, that's frightful. But no, we just had great, great fun. And, and chasing each other. In fact, we, we were chasing Wendy around a church hall. We were rehearsing the church hall. And we were chasing her, trying to debag her sort of thing. And the, the, the vicar came around the corner and she ah, oh, good afternoon, vicar. And then, <laughs> get, get running. Great, no. Great. Happy, the three of the happiest time, years in my life was doing Dog 2 with Patrick and the two girls. We've recently written a book of part of them, and um, is it strange to write about your character? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. And thank you, because I'll slip you the five pounds later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was actually... Um, what I was really, what I was really most kind of excited about was Ace meeting the Thirteenth Doctor, and I knew that that would be the bit that you guys would all really like to read about. So yes, that was the main kind of point for me of Ace meeting the, and also to clear up a lot of things from the past, like why does Ace have so many ways of finishing? in the show, you know, she's died a few times, she's gone off to Gallifrey, she's done this, done that. So I wanted to explain that. And then also things like, why, if Ace came from Perivale, does she have quite a posh voice? <laughs> so I kind of thought, well, why would that be? Oh yes, it's because she wanted to sound like the Blue Peter presenters that she used to watch. So she used to kind of put that voice on. <laughs> why, if Ace came from Perivale, did she support Charlton Athletic and not, per not uh, Queen's Park Rangers or something like that? So I explained that by she had an uncle in Plumstead who used to take her to football matches. So it was just a great opportunity to sort of finish all that off, as well as, um, you know, writing a story. And I think it was um, having played this character for most of my life really now, yes, more than half of my life anyway, I sort of felt that it, it, was, it wasn't too difficult a job to do, if you know what I mean. It was, uh, it was nice to get some sort of closure on who she is, who Dorothy is, who Ace is now. But thank you, great question. Thank you very much. Uh, yes? Um, um, Not if it's in the church, because it's a long climb up that hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too old. He needs a bump standing. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> yes, so I suppose um, this is a question about perhaps, perhaps if I could broaden it out to wider location memories. What are your favourite memories of filming uh, on location? Um, you know, for any programme, obviously particularly Doctor Who, but perhaps Sophie, if I start with you, what are your favourite location memories? Of film oh. on Doctor Who. Oh my goodness, so many. Um, well, I think I, I, I used to love staying in Lulworth Cove for Curse of Fenric, and we also stayed there during the filming of Survival as well. That was great fun. The parties on the beach with uh, that John used to, John Nathan Turner used to put on. But I think it, I always loved location filming because there was something um, exciting about going away, well it's a bit like a sort of convention atmosphere if you like, you know, you're all together, you, you, you have to stay together, for, you know, you haven't got any other distractions, so you're kind of focusing really on the story but also the, the, the wider community of the, of the crew as well, I don't know whether you had this as well guys, but you know, the sort of, we got to know each other very well, the location crew was always the same. So the camera people and the makeup and costume, there was no distinction between us and them. I often feel sorry nowadays when I see film locations and they've got these Winnebagos and the actors are all off in their Winnebagos, which would have been quite nice sometimes. <laughs> but actually what I loved about it was that you finished a scene and you sort of sat at the side and watched other people's scenes or, you know, you'd go and sit in the makeup and have a good gossip or... You know, it, it was very much a, a real sense of camaraderie on, on location. 
And that's what I, what's what I really enjoyed about it, was getting to know the people behind the cameras as well, as well as the people in front of them. Thank you very much. I don't, I don't you think, think yeah. you said about Winnebago, I don't think the BBC knows what a Winnebago is. <laughs> no, possibly you not. You all heard it in the one room and that's it. Whether you're the star or the small bit. So. Best well, thing about, I like locations, yeah. is, is the hotels. Good food, <laughs> good beds. And that's it, it's lovely. A bit, a bit of comfort. <laughs> away from yeah, home. Comfort away from home. No, I, I prefer locations because you're actually in a church mm -hmm. rather than yeah. a, a set of, of, of a church. And when we flew over to Seville for the, for the two doctors, we had this huge party, you know, we're all like, we're in Spain, and by the 12th bottle of Rioja, we all were sailing and sing along. <laughs> and then this party pooper said, We are here to film tomorrow. Oh, yeah, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> and we all went off the bed. <laughs> John, I'm going to twist this question slightly for you. If you could have been in any Doctor Who story, in any location, what would it have been? If you could choose one wow. in the past, what would you choose? What a question. What a question. So many come to mind. Um, well, the, the demons, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, being here is, uh, is really quite... As a fan myself, it's just a, a joy to be, to be here. But that is such a, a quintessential story. You, you, you've got the, the great sense of the medieval. You've got the oncoming sense of Azal. The, the unit family, the Doctor, the Master. It's just a beautiful... There's a wonderful moment. I, I love that moment for uh, Captain Yates in The Demons when you're on the motorbike, uh, driving along by Bessie, <laughs> and you give this wonderful... Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favourite moments for Captain Yates. Oh, good. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. <laughs> I don't even remember doing it. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Another question from... Uh, yes, at uh, the very back there, sir. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for Sonia, actually. Uh, and I'd like this question for Sonia before. Because I was going to ask about the book that you wrote uh, for the Bridge Stewart series. So, how did that come about? And what was it like to be able to Oh yeah, well that was great fun. So the editor, Andy Frankham Allen, approached me to do it um, and I was uh, pregnant at the time so he was very patient with me. I think it took quite a while for us to get the first draft down. Um, but that was really interesting because I've always watched Doctor Who just with my mum. I've never really known the, the canon of it at all. Um, so to do the research into Unit and to who Lethbridge Stewart is as a character was really um, exciting. And I would love to do more. Hopefully we will at some point. Um, but yes, um, thank you for, for reading it. <laughs> it's a while ago now, so thank you. Jamie next. You can write. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 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 <laughs> Another question. Yes, yes. Uh, well, I had a question for Sadie, actually. I was going to say that my, my brother went to the Serbian adventures back in the day when I was a kid, but my dad can remember watching Elizabeth Slayton at Serbian back in the 70s. And he acted on yes, it was right here. He made sure he mentioned to say that she was a really important role model for women back in the 1970s, especially, I think, as a, as a, as a, as a bit of an icon. And I just wondered, do you feel like um, your mother's work will continue to be you know, inspirational and be a role model for women in the future? Oh, I hope so. I mean, I think the world is changing so much now um, and we almost don't need to have such a sort of niche role models. You know, she was a journalist and um, very much striking out on her own. I think now we can look at more um, a broader sense of what a female role model is and not even necessarily needing to denote it as a certain binary. But I would love to think that and I'm so touched that people still want to watch Mum and watch through, um, you know, Doctor Who in the start, uh, Sarah Jane Adventures, it's lovely, it's really humbling, so thank you to your dad as well. <laughs> Are there any more hands? Yes. Um, so all of you who have worked on Doctor Who... Can you speak up? We can't hear the master. So all, you, <laughs> so all of you have worked on Doctor Who, Big Finish and all that, sort of all together, done conventions together. Who's the biggest troublemaker out of all of you? <laughs> Kim <Kendra! laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Tim, definitely Tim. Yeah. 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 When I get the chance, but not that I haven't caused any trouble for the last 18 months, unfortunately, so I've got a lot stored up. <laughs> yeah, Tim, you always do bring a lovely, happy sense of mystery. <laughs> to, uh... <laughs> but it's always such great, great fun when you're there, really. We've got time for two more. You, you had your hand up, didn't you? Yeah, I was just going to say, 
I wonder about the Apollo landings, you know, to just have uh, Neil Armstrong and then Buzz Aldrin come down. Yeah. And just for the TARDIS to materialise. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, I'm very sorry, as you were. <laughs> Yes, they really did go. So conspiracy theories, yes, are often numpties, really. <laughs> <laughs>